Hey guys, today I'm at Tolman Music with Ron Thorne. Hey. Ron Thorne is the principal master builder at Fender for the custom shop. Yep. And he was so kind to do a challenge with me. And the challenge is, what Squire guitar would he buy if he had to buy a Squire guitar? And what would he look at? And how would he, we're gonna kind of see how, what he sees and why he chooses what he cho chooses. But first, I don't want to confuse you. Could you explain to him what does principal master builder mean? Wow. Uh, in addition to building custom shop guitars, I also do custom tooling, CNC tooling, programming, the inlay work, uh, a few other things. I'm developing the custom shop school of Blue 3. I'm going to have employees be a part of a classroom, which I'll be teaching. That'll be happening later in the year. So. There's a few other duties in addition to just building guitars. Okay, so we're looking at the Squires here. First, tell me what you're looking at. I, I want a Strat okay. right out of the gate. And okay. I see eight Strats to pick from at this point. And it's a really good cross-section of not only colors, pickup configurations, controls. When you look at Strats, are you traditional guy, three single coils? Or are you throw it to the window, you don't yeah, care? I want to, I, ideally, I usually just use the neck and middle pickup. I love the neck and middle. In fact, in the 80s, when all the rage was the single bridge humbucker, right. my Strat had only the neck and middle pickup and I had no pickup in the bridge. It was the anti-Super Strat at the time. And you made it that way. They didn't sell it that no, way. No, I right? made it that way, yeah. So you literally, you just removed it and- Took it out. And made it. Yeah. That's funny. I liked it. That will be coming out next year, <laughs> 2020. The Ron yeah. signature model. Yeah, the Ron Thorn. No, no, no bridge, bridge pickup. So I'm not opposed to one with a humbucker in the in the bridge. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And it's it's a good thing to have if and, need be. And I probably should have asked you this before. Have you even touched any of the new Squires? Like, have you, you know, because I know you work at the factory and stuff, but I, I mean, the Squires aren't really coming from that factory. Yeah, Do you get to we, see them? Do you touch them? Not so much. So, that, so that's why I want to establish, these are new to you, right? These are new to me. I'm not familiar with the models even, sadly. That's okay. But <laughs> that's not important. I know what to look for. I know if it'll feel good to me. Okay. And, uh, and so a, could you pick, I know we said you're going to pick one, but could you pick two or three and then yeah. we'll walk through why the two or three and then the final one, which you end up with. You got it. Okay. So let's do it. What, what are the three? I'm digging the orange one for a traditional. So okay. either the orange or the burst, and I love this purple, looks like a plum crazy. Right, right. Single, single hum with the matching head. Okay. I like that. Uh, let's go with those three. Wait, what was the three? Orange? Orange. Blue. Burst. And the and, burst. And the matching head, single, single hum. Okay, so that's the three we're going to, yeah, let's grab let's them. give those starters. Yep. How do we grab them? Do anyone know? So what he ended up picking, ironically, is an affinity, uh, a contemporary, and a classic vibe. And uh, this is really cool. And so let's let's walk you through. Obviously, I'm guessing this was visual, right? You picked him for the visuals first. Yeah, visual. And this this is I'm intrigued by this and this. I like that. I'm not opposed to it. Vint vintagey and vintage with a twist. Uh, it seemed like a good cross section. Right. Hadn't really considered uh, that there were three different models. In fact, until we looked at it, and I, I thought these were closer in model specs, but right. it doesn't look like it. So, uh, if you tell us what matters to you, like when you feel things, sure. What are you looking for? Well, they're all rosewood boards, which is fine. And if one of these was maple, I would have been okay with that too. So I'm, I, I like both, both um, uh, rosewood fretboards or maple fretboards. So that's 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 a given here. But the neck feel to me is definitely the most important. And that's very personal. There's countless neck shapes. Some are, even though I have fairly large hands, I don't like a, a big neck. So right out of the gate, I can tell I dig this neck shape. Immediately, I can already feel that this, I could get along with this. If this had a giant neck, right. I would, it would immediately wouldn't even make it through the running. I wouldn't even want to play it. It could sound great, but I would just, have difficulty with it. It wouldn't be comfortable for me for more than one song, let's say. 
So I like it. It's small. Step one. It's a satin finish on the back of the neck, so it's very friction free. And that's just, all right, that right. feels good. Right. Smooth, fast, etc. So, so far so good. Right? right? All right. I'll Does just kind of. matter to you? Do you care how heavy or light a guitar is? If it's exceptionally heavy, that might give me some issues. Taking this down, this felt medium weight, this is good. This is, this is real good. <laughs> yeah, this is great. When you, when I said, now when I asked you, I said, wait, does weight matter? When you said, yeah, if it's extra, you know, if it's overly heavy, is it because you don't like the weight, the feel of the weight, or is it because you know something in, about the wood, or that there's something that a heavy guitar flags you as a builder? Yeah, both. And also, extra light. I can't get along with really light guitars, more so because of the tone. I feel that there isn't enough grunt to it. It just sounds a little wimpy and thin on super light guitars. I'll get to playability in a second. A couple little things I, I just will do to, to sort of check the neck. Uh, I'll use the string as a straight edge, so I'll fret on the first fret, and I'll put my pinky on the last fret, and I'll look at that relief. That is spot on perfect. That's really good. On the treble side, see a little bit of clearance right there? Right. That's good, so there's no wonkiness to the neck, Right. which You'd hate to find that out later. Like, huh, right. this isn't good. So neck seems seems good. So playability, I would assume that's next. Squat down here a little bit. Kind of rock through some chords. Feels good. It feels like the nut has been cut well. That sound, I mean, that didn't fret out or anything. That's right. way over a full step, no right. fretting out. Cool. Plays good, frets look good. There's no popping out going on here, which I'm not sure how the climate is here, but right. seems like the shop has got their act together. Right. There's no fret sprout, right. you know how that feels, right? Yeah. The, the board shrinks because of low humidity and the frets feel like they're popping out. That, that's plenty yeah. smooth. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so, so far so good. Straight up strat configuration. Do you have a saddle preference? Versus mm. Bent saddles versus bent this. saddles. I would, I would choose that. I like that. Yeah, bent saddles. String spacing. This, this looks good. It looks like this might be the narrower spec, two right. and a sixteenth. What, what's how are you detecting that? Well, visually by the distance from the high E off the side of the neck. So on, you can see there's a fair amount of space right. between the string yeah, and like the edge of the board. Looks like two millimeters, right? About. Right. Yeah, maybe right. even a little bit more. Yeah. That's a lot of real estate, so you can do some vibrato and not fall off the edge. A lot of vintage spec bridges, or all the vintage spec bridges, are wider here, and that high E can get dangerously close to the edge, especially if the tops of the frets are heavily rolled. You're right on the edge of the cliff, and it doesn't take much to, for the string to fall off. So, tuners look good, sealed, sealed gears. They probably feel really smooth, and yeah, that's... That feels good. Two string trees, which is not vintage correct, but right. for the fact that there's a spacer underneath really minimizes that break angle over the right. nut. So I'll check how the nut is cut. Okay, so you like it. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little surprised that it's <laughs> as dialed in as it is, too. This guitar is sub $250, so you know. That's how much a setup is. <laughs> and the setup on this is really good. <laughs> so, so, okay, let's go to the next one. All right, now this looks, wow, this is really light, too. This looks super cool. Matching headstock, even the configuration, and I like the two knobs. Just kind of simplifies right. it a little bit. Weight, cool. Neck. Very similar. It's small. It's a little bit bigger, but it's got the satin feel on the back. Right. Similar, similar spacing here. Again, lots of room there. Right. The two-point trim, that's cool too. It's very modern, right? It's got a lot of modern features to it. All right, let's check it out. Okay. I'll do that little routine there. Okay, this has a little bit more relief okay. than the first one. So. Now in this case, with that relief where you, you would, you want it a little lower, would you do that by adjusting the saddles or would you no. tighten the truss rod? Truss rod first. 
a little trick on that. Can I do my? Oh yeah. If you want to give a trick. You as give far it. as the order of how to adjust things, train. That's my little anagram. Right. right? Yeah. So it's tune. Right. Then the relief, which is via the truss rod. Right. So you tune it, the relief, then the action, and then the intonation. Right. And then the N. I came up with noodle. <laughs> okay. And then start all over again. Tune it up. Adjust the relief. Adjust the action. Intonate it and then noodle away. That's, That's awesome. the order. That's the order to do things. Because if you do any, if you swap those around, you're going to be chasing your tail again. That's, a, that's an amazing acronym. That's awesome. We haven't heard them yet, but right. playability-wise, that might play a little bit better. Right. This just needs a bit more of a setup, but it's all there. Neck feels good, etc. All right. Now we're going to go on to number three. You picked the classic vibe. Yeah. That is classic indeed. Yes. The lightest of the three. Amazing. This is this is alder. I'm trying to see how many pieces. It's like maybe a three or four piece alder. Feel the weight of that. Oh yeah, that's nice. <sighs> that is light. So already, do you hear that right there? Yeah. Sticky. Okay, because it has a, a a gloss lacquered neck, so I'd probably steel wool the back of the neck right away. Break that down a little bit. Right. Maybe a little automotive carnauba wax. Right. Apply that just like you would on a vehicle. So steel wool, then carnauba wax? No, or it would be wool? order. Yeah. Okay. If you put enough carnauba on here, it would feel very friction free, but you just have to reapply it after each gig or after each session. Carnu carnauba brand, any suggestions? All right. Okay. Wow, now I'm getting nerdy. <laughs> it has to say pure carnauba. Okay. Nothing that says carnauba slash cleaner, because anything with a cleaner has a little bit of pumice in it, and that will scratch up the finish. So pure carnauba. I like Meguiar's. Put it on with a cloth, a, a Viva, Viva's paper towel cloth, where it says, feels like cloth, but right. Viva's paper towel, apply it, let it dry 15 minutes, buff it with a microfiber or a clean Viva's, and you'll notice after maybe two applications that it's fast. So, you know, strike one if there's gonna be a strike, but I would address it. It just feels a little, a little right. stickety. As far as the neck goes, the neck shape feels really nice. This is probably the smallest of all three. Very shallow carve, nice and round, there's no shoulder. So as far as the feel of all three of these, I could, I could live with all three of them. The neck carve, meaning yeah. there was no big U, there's no hard V, right. nothing peculiar. These are all small, nice, round carves. Okay, this probably, well you can see how much the, the string is closer to the edge than the yeah. other one. So maybe this has the wider string spacing, right. I suspect. Uh, it's rolled a little bit more on the edges, which makes it feel nice. You can wrap your thumb around there and really get around it. I mean, that's, right. I can get, maybe I could fret the high E with my thumb and still, no, why would I do that? No. <laughs> Anyways, okay. This has the most relief over all of them. This is a fair amount there. And this looks like, man, it's tough to tell. Seven and a quarter, maybe nine and a half. It's not as flat. Maybe this is when they're saying vintage or classic, this might have a seven and a quarter, which usually you need a little higher action for, otherwise it's gonna choke out. Right. So, like that. Right. It's already choking out right there. So you hear that? Yeah. It already choked out. Yeah. So, you know, it could use a little bit of love. Right. This wouldn't be for me, okay. for that reason alone. If I have to have higher action than this to prevent it from choking out, I would rather have something that feels a little faster. This right. is definitely a vintage setup. Right. A rounder board, wider spacing, great for first position, but for more stunt guitar work, those two would be right. a little funner. This is actually, I'm pretty sure this is the most expensive of the three, but mm. this is still sub $400. When we were kids, right. $400 guitar yeah, yeah. was, was yeah. These are amazing. Yeah. Killing, it. Yes. Killing it. Killing it. And that was 80s money. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Even factoring in inflation. This also has the Kluson style tuning keys. For a vintage looking instrument, it really has to be this. But performance wise, the sealed gearboxes, right. I think, are better. And the ratio is usually a little higher on these, which yeah. means, right, eight. Let's say this is 14 to 1. You right. have to rotate this 14 times for the 
those are likely 16 or 18 to 1. So you can, it, it's, it takes more revolutions, but you can really kind of fine tune yeah, it a little I easier. Like the, I like the more ratios because when you're tuning, especially with like the clip-on tuners now, I find the lower the gear ratio, the more the needle jumps, jumps. around. Yep. And, you and keep missing it. Yeah, you keep, keep yeah, going and, back yeah, and trying to. you're chasing it. And yeah, it gets fun. Exactly. So. Yeah. So, sorry, guy. You look cool. You look the part. Right. Knowing that I could dial this in a little bit more, right. I would opt for this guy. Because I think it's, I love the matching head. If, if for no reason alone, I love the matching head. And this can be really versatile. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. Because you mentioned earlier, we were talking earlier, it happens. <laughs> and you mentioned that you have, you own a Squire. Yes. But it's a, go ahead and tell us. All right, my number one, if any of you, know, we've all got our number one, and this has been my number one since 1987, is an 85 Squire Strat. Black, basswood body, maple neck and board. That's my baby. I love it. Ron, I want to thank you for doing oh, this. Oh, my, what? And what? I don't know. What? I want to plug it in. Oh yeah. I want to hear it. this thing. Okay, yeah, let's plug it in. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let me just at least. Yeah. yeah. Let's find it. Where can we plug in? Okay. So yep. All right, we're in. We're plugged into a, a blackface style Fender Deluxe Reverb Classic, classic Fender amp. Right. Position one or five. Right. Whatever you call it. Sounds great. There's all your Stevie Ray tones. That sounds good. Cool. Okay, my fave, the Robert Cray. Oh, quacky. That's, yeah, that sounds good. Ah, I love that. Okay, the mid. Eh. Walking. So I wanted to see if this is auto split. It is. Right. Still quacky. Hopefully it's that coil. Okay, so this is definitely the winner. I love it. And this is, and just to clarify, this is the first time you've tried these, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is... What is it called? What is this? This is the... It doesn't say it on the guitar. It's called the Contemporary. Contemporary. Where I'm sure it's because it's a little bit of something old and a little right. something new. Your bridge, two point. Got some nice little mods. I want to thank uh, Ron for doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. As always, uh, I just want to thank you for your time. And until next time, know your gear. Yes. <laughs>